Yes, sir. Bible truth. I want to read something for you. Um, and we, I want to make this more of a study, guys, with regards to um, talking about prophecy. Um, it's really important, guys, that we understand um, that there are many people who are going to misrepresent who God is. And I told you the scriptures tell us to beware. God warns us to beware of the leaven, to beware of the concision, to beware of their doctrine. Because he tells you that their doctrine is to make merchandise out of you. And um, I think a lot of people find it hard to believe that um, that men would coordinate on such a large scale to fake Bible prophecy. And that's exactly what's gone on, that there is people who obviously have a global intent for world, quote unquote, domination, even though they're all ruled over by death. But they want to make merchandise out of you for the short time that they are here. Right. And then, of course, they want to pass it down to whoever they think is their insiders or whoever they want to pass it down to. And this is kind of one of these things where people are doing it and they're being wicked and they're trying to use the word of God deceitfully to justify their murder and their theft and their lies. Right. So um, we're going to cover a prophecy that many people say is a failed prophecy. I'm going to go ahead and put Legionnaire Ministries on here, R.C. Sproul, and uh, we're going to listen to him talk about it. And then um, we're going to discern it. We're going to we're going to spiritually discern it the way that it's supposed to be discerned and uh, not try to make a mockery of the word of God and try to use God for uh, war profiteering purposes. Right. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and go. So if you want this video, it's called This Generation, The Last Days According to Jesus with R.C. Sproul. OK, let's go ahead and play it here at the two minute mark. I our knowledge, as I've mentioned, that. That which precipitated the whole discourse, Jesus' prediction of the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem and the destruction of the city of Jerusalem did in fact take place within the time frame of 40 years. As these are so he's already doing this and he's telling you what he, the conclusion. He's saying, well, when Jesus talked about the destruction of the temple and he's talking about the destruction of the city, He's saying, well, that did happen in 40 years. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and let him play, but we're going to get back to a couple of things we want to cover. We want to cover the destruction of the temple and we're going to cover the destruction of the city and the destruction of Israel, because I've seen this whole thing where they're documenting the 70 AD. In fact, um, last night I watched several documentaries on it. Right. Oh, the 70 AD Romans sacked it. And this there was the day of vengeance and all this stuff. But let's go ahead and listen. That's unfolded in AD 70. So I think, again, we see and feel the weight of the problem. I, I labor this point for this reason. I'm not convinced that evangelical Christians really do feel the weight of this problem. And that's part of the problem of ignoring higher criticism and simply preaching to the choir and, and talking to among ourselves and not really listening to this criticism that is raised. And we have to give an answer to these critics uh, that have devastated uh, uh, Scripture and the person of Christ. And so I think it is our obligation as Christians who believe in uh, the deity of Christ and in the uh, inspiration of the scriptures to feel the weight of this burden and to address it as we encounter it. Now, there are many scholars who feel that the escape hatch from all of this difficulty is found in verse 32 of Mark 13, immediately following the time frame reference that Jesus gives. Again, in verse 30, he says, assuredly, most certainly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. Again, let me remind you that the statement that Jesus makes here is made in emphatic terms. I can't conceive of Jesus being any more emphatic about the time frame than he is here when he says, assuredly, I say to you that this generation will by no means pass away until all of these things take place. OK, so let's step back, guys. Let's go. Let's go up to the top and let's just kind of read it, because I know we're talking about this. Um, it talks about. But in those days after that tribulation, 
The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And typically when the scriptures talk about great, it typically talks about a great multitude, like a great multitude of angels. Right. Right. So it says, and then shall he send, there it is. Then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect. Now, R.C. Sproul is a, I believe he's a Calvinist. So for him, oh my goodness, can you imagine? Right? How do you guys explain this? He says, the son of man shall come in the clouds with great power and glory. Right? And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, like from the four corners of the earth, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven, right? Then it says, now learn of a parable. It talks about how the parable in the mouth of a fool, right? Now learn of a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and put it forth her leaves, you know that it is near, the summer is near, meaning it's time for fruit. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see, <clears throat> These these things come to pass when you see these things come to pass. Like he says, when you when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh. Meaning when you see these things, know that it is nigh even at the door. Verily, I say unto you that this generation, right, this generation, listen, shall not pass till all these things be done right so it talks about all these things be done but we're going to go back up we're going to go back up because there's something else that they were talking about up here and i think when they were talking up here i think they were talking about um oh, well, I'm the wrong one there you go so going up to the top and it says as he went out of the temple one of his disciples saw, said unto, saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Keep in mind, stones and buildings are here, right? He says, see what manner, what, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here, right? And Jesus answered, answering saith unto him, see thou these great buildings there shall not be left one upon another that shall not be thrown down right then it goes on he's talked about all this stuff and he's talking about when shall it be fulfilled if we go down guys he talks about the troubles he's talking about there'll be a testimony and then he says this notice here's a clue and the gospel must first be published among all nations, among all nations, right? Notice he's talking about the temple, the stones, there will not be left one stone upon another. He's talking about there'll be a testimony and it says there's the gospel will be put first be published. So the gospel must come first. What must come before these things? The gospel must come. And the gospel must first be published. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought, therefore, what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the what? Holy Ghost. Now, the brother shall betray the brother to death, the father, the son, the children shall rise against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of, listen, all men. Remember, it says the world hates you. Remember, it hated me first for my name's sake. But then it says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Remember, we talked about the gospel, talk about the testimony, talk about how you'll be delivered up, how people are going to betray one another. People are going to hate one another. And then he says, look. 
You should be hated by all men. <coughs> all men. I mean, you'll be hated by the world. <coughs> and he says, but he that should, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Right. Okay. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet standing where it ought not, then it says, let him that readeth understand, meaning he prophesied. Can you discern it? Do you know what it means? Th then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay. Flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. Remember, he talked about a temple and he talked about a house. Think about it. There's a temple. He talked about temples, buildings, and houses. And he's saying, look, these temples are going to be destroyed. There's not going to be left one stone upon another. And he talked about the buildings, which are the temples and the houses. And he says, there will not, don't go into your, the, your house. And he says, don't go to take anything out of your house. Okay. And let him that is in the field, right? Not turn back again for to take up his garment. So it's talking about a temple, a house, a building, a field, and a garment, right? But woe unto them that are with child and to give and to them that give suck in those days. Woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight, notice your flight, right? Oh, wow, your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning. Listen to this. This is really important. He says, in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of creation. OK. Which God created in this time, neither shall be. Meaning, it won't be like anything before, and there'll be nothing like it afterwards. This affliction is going to be different than anything you've ever experienced. Anything before and anything after. Okay? And it says, except that the Lord had shortened those days. Then he says, listen to this. And this is where people, here's the, here's the catch. He says, okay, we know what this is because it says endure, right? It says, except the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect, there goes the elect again, for the elect's sake. It's not saying for everyone. It says for the elect's sake, whom he have chosen, he has shortened those the days. And so this is, what, this is why people think, well, the elect must be talking about the flesh, right? It says no flesh be saved. It says for the elect's sake. And it says, and then if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there. Believe not. So mind you, this is talking about the coming of Christ. And then it's saying, but if any man say to you, here he is, right? Here is Christ, or he's there. It's like, don't believe him. Now, how is it that every eye is going to see him? But he's saying, if somebody says to you, here he is, there he is. Don't believe him. Let's keep on going. Okay. For false Christ and false, pro false Christ and false prophets. These are false messiahs and false, what? Prophets or teachers shall rise and shall show signs and wonders. They said they, they're going to rise and they're going to show you signs and wonders, lying signs and wonders. And it says they're going to do these things to what? It's telling you why. It says they're going to do these things to seduce you guys. It says they're going to give you signs and wonders, something you can see. You can be like, well, that's Bible prophecy being fulfilled. I know it is. Right. 1948, Balfour Declaration to seduce. To seduce. If it were possible, it says if it were possible, meaning it's not possible, even the elect. He says the elect's not going to be fooled by it. He said, oh, there's going to be many who are going to be fooled by it, but it says, the elect's not going to be fooled by it. The elect's going to know that's a lying sign and wonder. It says, but take ye heed. Behold, listen, I have foretold you all. I have foretold you all things. Okay. 
But in those days after that tribulation, so he talked about this tribulation. He says, in those days after that, what? Tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of the heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds. From the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven. Now learn of the parable of the fig tree when her branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. Ye know the summer is near. It's time for fruit. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. He didn't say, verily I say unto you that generation. He said this generation. Let's look and see if we can find something about that generation. Let's see if that's even in the scriptures. Oh, yeah, there's a that generation. So God does know how to use that generation. OK, so they can't use that excuse. OK, this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Okay, but of that day, listen, you know, but of that day and that hour, that's how God is, just knows how, knoweth, no, listen, knoweth no man. He said, but he just said, I, I told you all things. But he says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, right? Neither the son, but the father. So he said, nobody knows, not the angels in heaven, Neither the son, listen, but the father. And you try to tell me the Trinity talking about some co-equal, co-eternal. Get out of here, guys. God is a spirit. The reason why he's saying this is because he says we have but one God, even the father. That's why I, I'll show you that. And but but it's just saying that God is the root and the offspring, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's why that's why it says that there's only one God. God is a spirit. OK, take ye heed, watch and pray. For you know not when that time, when the time is for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house. Remember, he said, don't go to take anything out of your house. He said, told you, don't go take anything out of your house. He talked about the temples. He said, the temples, they were not, see these days, like, look at these buildings. Yeah, you see these temples. He said, not one, st one stone will be left upon another. He says, and don't go back to take anything in your house. He said, if you're in the field, don't go back to take, to try to take your garment. And then he says, you know, take heed. And says, for the son of man is like a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants. And to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. He said, he can come at any time. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping you know, they talked about sleeping. They talked about people being dead. You know, they said, oh, he's asleep. Oh, he's dead. Too late. It says, and watch, I say unto you. I say unto all. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Notice notice this. And what I say unto you, I say unto you. Here's the, here's the key. Here's the key point, guys. Very key. It talked about the testimony and it talked about the gospel. Right? It talked about the gospel. And then it said, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. He said, nobody knows the day nor the hour. <laughs> he just told you that. He said, look, look at what he's saying. He said, watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing, Right? Is he going to come at the end of the afternoon? Are you going to come in the midnight? Or are you going to come in the, in the morning? Right? Right? At the cock corner in the morning. Okay? Then it says, and what I say unto you, what I say to you, I say unto all, watch. So he's making it. He will, why, well, if since it's not going, he says he's talking about this generation. Why would I need to watch? How is that relevant to me? Uh, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So you can't sit here and pretend. 
Uh, me, I'm sorry, I gotta see what they did. Just, what did they do with this in the modern Bible versions? I just got. I'm, I'm very curious. Okay, it's, in essence, it's it, it, it's still somewhat the same, right? Okay, let's go back to R.C. Sproul here. And he goes on to amplify that by saying, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So Jesus is hanging an awful lot of his own credibility mm. on what he's saying here. Sure, yeah. These are my words, and my words mm. will last longer than the heaven and the earth. So then we hear the escape hatch in verse 32. But of that death. By the way, when he says, my words shall last longer than the heavens and the earth, what does that tell you? When Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, what does that tell you? So <laughs> just, just to be, that's, I want you to understand, see, he could have said, see, you know how they change in the modern Bible version? They talk about, well, they put the, like the, the ages and all this kind of stuff. This my word shall last longer than those dispensation. You know it doesn't say, it doesn't say that right. It says longer than the what earth, which means which is saying what guys. I mean saying this this world, this kingdom, this heaven and earth. Right? He says I saw a new heaven and new earth. He said my kingdom is not of this world. Remember that. So it already gives you a clue because he's saying my words will not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is what he's telling you. So when you see, when he says there'll be signs and wonders that could deceive even the elect, if it were possible. And then he says, heaven and earth will pass away. Do you know how blind you have to be to be like, well, he said heaven and earth is going to pass away. But he says there's going to be some lying signs and wonders. And I do remember him saying something like, my kingdom is not of this world and that you got to be born again and flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter it. And you got to to be born again means you have to believe the gospel and to believe the gospel means you have to have faith in the promise of God who says, I'll give you eternal life. And faith is the substance of things, hopefully everything's not seen. And then he said, from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. And then you just have to, you have to be like, you know, all the, <laughs> all the things that were said, I just don't believe those things. So I'm going to look and I'm going to look across and read my history books because I get it. They're lying to you from very, they lie from, from early primary, right? They're lying to you. They're lying to you telling you, well, let's learn a little history. And in your history book, they're trying to, they're trying to implement, well, there's this place called Israel and Jerusalem in the Middle East and, you know, God's chosen race and, uh, you know, God's chosen race and they, the world hates his chosen race. And therefore, that's why we as a good so-called Christian nations, we we show that we love God by showing our love towards God's chosen race. And then we help fight wars and we help them expand their borders because their enemies are vicious and they want to attack and they, they hate them. So the way that we can be blessed is by blessing them. And what is God saying in the scriptures, guys? What do you say? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Right? So if you have a kingdom that passes away, is that God's eternal kingdom, guys? You have a, you said my sheep have eternal life. How are you gonna have how are you gonna have eternal life in a temporal kingdom? This is a temporal kingdom. That's why the subjects of the king, you know how you have a kingdom and there's a king and there are subjects. Well, guess guess what? It says if our gospel will be hid, it's hidden from those whom the God of this world had blinded the mind of them that believe not. And who rule, what rules over all, all men? Death. So all the, the subjects of this kingdom are subject to what? Death. And the kingdom, this kingdom itself is a kingdom of death. And the enemy that must be destroyed is what? Death. So if the enemy needs to be destroyed and all the subjects are children of death, God's saying, well, your whole kingdom needs to be destroyed and it will be destroyed. It will be destroyed. Your kingdom will be destroyed one way or another. It's going to be destroyed. This is what God is saying. Very clear. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Sorry. 
an hour. No one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Now that verse 32 is one of the most controversial verses in all of Mark's gospel because it, uh, among other things, it's a verse in which Jesus puts a limit on his own knowledge when he said that the day and the hour knows nobody, not even the angels, not even the son, just the father. Right. And that's provoked all kind. And that's why I said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father because it says we... Because there's really only one God. People get caught up in the titles. But to us, there is but one God, the Father. Of whom are all things, and we in him, being found in him, and this uh, but found in him, found in who? If any man be in Christ, in one Lord, he that joined to the Lord is one spirit, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by what? Him. <laughs> what happened to the let us? <laughs> it's like, it's like, and guys, you gotta understand the reason why it says let us. Is because it says God chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. Because God's like basically saying, "Well, you know, you you know, you're 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 a man that was made of the earth, that's of the of the world, that's temporal, that's going to pass away. All things will pass away. That's a temporal that you don't have eternal life. When you're formed from the dust of the earth, it means you're going to pass away. You're going to die. All flesh will perish, and men shall turn again into the dust. So God said, "Look, well." I know, I know you're, the children of the flesh are not my people, right? So they're going to have to believe the gospel. So there's going to, have a, there's going to be a time when they're going to have to, you know, they're going to be living in their world. And he's saying people are going to come to them and preach the gospel. And they need to, they need to believe that gospel. But there's going to be many other people, children of the flesh, who are in this world, who are going to be caught up with the cares of this world looking at the treasures and the worries and all that kind of stuff. And because of that, because they're so caught up with the world and with their greed and filthy lucre's sake and trying to make war and make merchandise, and because they're trying to manipulate and, and lord over one another, a lot of them are going to hate the gospel and say it's foolish. Like, why would I believe the gospel? Look at all the money and all the land and all the treasures and all the riches and all the stuff I get down here. Why in the hell would I want that? And they don't understand life down here is but a what? A vapor. This, it's so short. You don't really see in the scheme of eternity. It, it, it's so foolish to not believe the gospel in the scheme of eternity, guys. It, like I, I don't even know how to tell you how small a time this is compared to eternity. It's it's ridiculous. It really is. It's, it's like that's why it talks about if any man be wise in this world, <laughs> let him become a fool. Because it's like you're losing. You know, people when you look at uh, stock markets, when you look at stock charts. They, they say, well, you know, when you sometimes you're a little too close, you're looking at the ups and downs and stuff. And it says, and when, when in doubt, uh, zoom out. Well, zoom out. Look, <laughs> look at the bigger picture. Look at look at you can't even get the bigger picture of eternity. Eternity doesn't fit in your window frame. Right. You look out the window. You can't see past the horizon of eternity. You can't see it. <laughs> right. It's like, Everlasting. How, how do you measure everlasting, guys? You can't. You can't. So that's why I'm saying, you know, the Father is really the only one God. There's only one God. He's a spirit. But, you know, he has the, the titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's what he's saying. And he's saying he comes in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh. He comes fashioned as a man, even though he's a spirit. Because when we believe then we are hidden. Our life is hid in God. We're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But God says, I'm going to quicken that old man of sin, which isn't serving me. But that's all the children of this world can see. They can only see the outward facade, the old house, the old tabernacle. Right. So it's absolutely I don't want to go too much into it, but because I want to get to this and I don't want to make this super, super long, guys. I understand. So. It's important because I have to say that because the reason why I had to tell you that is because. Obviously, if uh, R.C. Sproul 
is saying, well, it's weird because, you know, this this breaks the Trinity, right? Oh, well, you know, it's Jesus. It's controversial because Jesus is talking about the limitations. You know, he's given limitations to his quote unquote deity. And then what I'm telling you is I'm saying, well, actually, God is a spirit, period. The flesh of Jesus is not God, was not God in the past and will never be God. The flesh of Jesus is mortal. That's why it could die. So there's only one God, the father. But God comes, the title, father, son, holy ghost. Now, you said, the way that I should be able to prove this to you, you should say, well, Marcus, you know what? You're saying that. But why don't you just show me a verse that proves that Jesus is the father of the children of God? Show me a verse that shows me that Jesus is the father of the children of God. And you say, well, if you can show me that from the scriptures, Marcus, then I'll believe you. But until then, you're just talking, right? Got it. So what we do is we go to Revelation, which is the revelation of who, guys? Revelation is the revelation of who, guys? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Right? That's what the revelation, <laughs> the revelation of Jesus Christ. So we're going to go here to Revelation 21.9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels. Now, remember when we were just reading in Matthew, it talked about angels. It talked about him coming with his angels. Okay. And then there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. So we know that the lamb is talking about Jesus, right? We know Jesus is lamb. Okay. I have to do it just because people say, oh, no. Yeah. And if I don't show it, right, Jesus, right? Behold, Jesus, the Lamb of God, right? Lamb of God. Upon Jesus, as he walked, and said, behold, the Lamb of God, okay? So we know Jesus We know Jesus is the Lamb, right? Okay, we got that. So the Lamb has a wife, okay? The Lamb has a wife. The wife's Lamb, and he carried me away where? In the Spirit, Nicodemus. Why in the Spirit? Because flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. That's why. So he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, right? What's the great city? Holy Jerusalem. Well, given, given that he said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. If someone says, hey, the holy city of God is in the desert. They built it with contractors and subcontractors. And night after 1948, do you should you believe that lying sign and wonder or should you be like, that's a lying sign and wonder? God said his kingdom come not with observation. He said, my kingdom is not in this world. And he said, the kingdom of God is within us and the kingdom of God is at hand. Why would the kingdom of God be within us? Because Jesus is the door. And the way that you enter Nicodemus is you must be born again. You got to be in Christ. You have to be born into the kingdom makes sense, right? You were born into the, you were born into this world, and he's saying your first birth, you're rejected by God in the flesh. You're absolutely rejected. So he's saying to get into his kingdom, you have to be born. You must be born again. It's not complicated. Like the fact that people are sitting here pretending. And they don't understand, well, wait a minute, I was born into this kingdom, it was my first birth. And then it says I must be born again. But then it says not of flesh nor of blood, nor the will of man, but of God. And God's called the father of spirits and tells us the children of the flesh are not the children of God. What's so difficult? You have a pattern of things down here. And God is saying, well, similarly, you must be born into his kingdom. You must be born again because he's saying, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Surely you're not naive and blind, so blind that you think you're God's people because a man and a woman had sex. Or you think that uh, that uh, you think that, well, God is my God is my father, Abba father, because um, he's going to take some of my flesh and combine it. No, he's like, I'm not taking it. That's another man's child with another man's wife. I'm that's not you're that's not you're not you're not my you're not my people. <laughs> you're not my children. Children of the flesh are not the children of God. So we know that it talks about come, I will show ye the bride, the lamb's wife. He took him in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me 
that great city, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven. Don't get confused and think, well, holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven is going to mean that you're going to look up in the sky one day and you're going to see, oh my goodness, I'm going to see some big giant bricks and I'm going to see this and that. No, remember the kingdom come not with observation. Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter it. Remember that. Because even if you, in your mind, mentally, you say, okay, well, the, the kingdom is going to come down from heaven, but it says flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter it, right? And this world is corrupt, and it says corruption does not, cannot inherit incorruption, right? Remember that? So, and besides that, the city is called his bride. So God has said, he's, God is, God is, a, I don't know if you know this, but God says, I'm a jealous, I'm a jealous God. You're not going to be, think about it. Think about the people down here and what they're doing for the riches of this world. Lord said, love not the world, nor the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Store not for yourselves treasures on earth where thieves break in and mount to corrupt. If you see what people are doing for earthy riches that perish, perishable riches, Corrupt riches, corruptible gold, corruptible silver. If they're doing all the murder and the crime and all this stuff for these riches. When they only have but a short time. Could you imagine what they would do if they could get the riches of God? So, so think about that. So God's like, no, you can't, you can't see, you can't even see it. You can't see it. You can't enter it. You got to be born into it. Right? So it's saying that holy city, which is the bride of the lamb, is what? Holy Jerusalem. Now, all I have to do now is if you don't be a forgetful hearer and don't sit there and say, I refuse to believe what you're showing me from the scriptures because you're not teaching me that God is a racist. He says he carried me away in the great and high mountain to show me the lamb's wife, which is the holy new Jerusalem. And he's saying the lamb's wife, Jerusalem, above, again, heaven, is mother of us all. Not some, but all. But all of who? All of us who've been born again, not of flesh, nor of blood, nor the will of man, but of God. All of the children of God have been born from heaven, Jerusalem, above. We've been born into the city. So this is what this is why I say heaven and earth. You know how people have borders and they say, well, you know, we got to we got to build some we build that wall so we don't get them illegal aliens trying to come up in here and invade our country. Them foreigners. Well, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> you can't enter God's kingdom. You can't enter God's kingdom. You have the illusion. You know, because this world essentially is just divided against itself. Those world is all the people who are fighting in all these different lands and these countries, guys. Those are all brothers, according to the flesh. These are all brothers of the first Adam. Everyone who's fighting, I don't care what you look like. I don't care how different you look. That's just the first Adam. You guys are all fighting. All the first Adams, these guys are murdering and killing each other for their mother earth. <laughs> They're all killing each other for their mother. They're like, hey, mama, mama, give me more treasures. Mama. They're killing. They're killing each other. And then their father is death. <laughs> their father is death. death. Death reigns over them. Right. And then mama swallows them back up into the grave. Mama. Right. So you got to understand when the scriptures are saying, guys. So I just I want to show you this, guys. I really do. I just want to show you this because when it says we have but one God, the father, and then Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. What do you mean if I've seen you, I've seen the father? I'm looking right like he's like, I'm looking right at you. What do you mean if I've seen you, I've seen the father? Oh, don't look at the outer. Don't look at the flesh. God is a spirit, right? God is a spirit. And then you talk about you baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. What name do you baptize in? One name. What name is that? Jesus. And then they're going to try to change. But, well, baptizing in the name, but you're talking about baptizing in the authority of. Well, yeah, he has, a, he has great authority. There's no question. But why are, you trying to, why are you trying to play word games? Yes, it's still the name, Jesus. 
<laughs> but uh, you go to these people, they play something again. Okay, let's let's go. Okay, all right. So I showed you that. I showed you that. Let's let's go back. It's Mark, right? I'm saying to you, okay. As I said to you, I said to all, watch. So you say, oh, I'm just saying it to y'all in this dispensation. I just saying it this, 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 in this in this dispensation, right? You sure you mean this dispensation or should you say that dispensation? <laughs> this, this generation, okay? All right, let's keep, let's, let's keep going, sorry. It's a Christological debate, but obviously Jesus is referring here to his human nature and the human nature is not omniscient. It would- There you go. Trinity always destroys itself. If you listen, <laughs> if you listen to these guys long enough, the Trinity always, it tells on itself. Because as you read the scriptures, it keeps talking about found in him, right? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What do you mean he? He said it's the Holy Ghost speaking in me, but then he says it's Christ speaking in me. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, then it says it's your father speaking in you. But then it just keeps saying he. And it says you're, we're speaking by the spirit. Amazing. It's heretical to assert that the human nature of Christ knew everything the divine nature did of course but the human nature knows only what a nor normal ordinary human being could know or it's so funny because the whole trinity thing is that there's three person three persons and they say the second person is one person two natures co-equal co-eternal so they're including the one person with two natures they say co-equal co-eternal then you get to the scripture and they're like okay his human nature didn't know everything. He just knew what a regular human knew. And then, then, and then they get caught in another lie. Well, wait a minute. How didn't how you said co equal co eternal? But didn't the, didn't he die? Uh, oh, well, that was just his human nature that died. But you do you not understand? Or do you not know what you what you worship? <laughs> Jesus said you worship you know not what. We know what we worship for salvations of the. Jews, are we not all ministering spirits? But I know them to say they're Jews or not. But the synagogue of Satan sent forth to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation. Heirs to the what? Kingdom. Oh, right. That's right. Flesh and blood cannot inher, heir, inherit the kingdom of God. Right? So the, these Trinitarians, they just, they lie on themselves. Constantly they lie. They, I mean, they, 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 they lie on themselves. Wait, well, they, they. They, they, they expose themselves because of the contradiction. They can't keep up with their lies, guys. A human who is informed by the divine. I mean, there are times when there is knowledge communicated from the divine nature to the human nature. Eh, nope. His spirit breath witness with my spirit. It doesn't say his spirit breath witness with my flesh that we are the sons of God. See? This is, these are the legion. These are, these, are the, these are the masters. These are master teachers. We're not separating them, but we are distinguishing them. But I he said we're not separated. <laughs> you know why he had to say that, right? You guys know why he had to say we're not separating them, right? But we are distinguishing them. What happened to co-equal, co-eternal, homie? We're not separating them because uh, that's like saying God's divided in parts. We're, we would never separate the 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 flesh from the spirit. Let's see, let's have her. I think this is word. I thought there was this, this phrase, tack or tab I thought it was a tabernacle. Gold. Maybe I'm wrong. Man, I thought I knew. That was not in there. Anyway, you know it talks about the tabernacles being the house, right? Right? So he's talking about tabernacle temple, he spake of his body. Well, he said we're not separating them. But listen to this. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this, guys. This is now I, I, the reason why this is important. This is a man who's teaching. He's high, R.C. Sproul is highly esteemed. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, house, temple, my temple he spake of his body. Knowing that surely I must put off this my what? My body, even as our Lord Jesus Christ had showed me. 
We're not separating them. You guys hear anyone else say stuff like this? See, these Trinitarians, they, they tell themselves. He told on himself, he said something, and then he realized, ooh, that's a contradiction. I thought I was teaching co-equal, co-equal, co, co, co co-eternal. God's all-knowing. He's omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. <laughs> right? That's what he said. They say one thing, and then they're like, uh, oh, 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 I just made a mistake now. Okay, uh. And he just says it, but he's in, it's like a classroom. Like, and when you're in a classroom, you should be able to raise your hand and be like, excuse me, teacher. I'm sorry, teacher. I'm sorry. I got a question. You mean you're not separating them? If one, if one of them knows all things and one of them doesn't know the time, <laughs> nor the, the time of the seasons, how in the heck can you say that they're co-equal, co-eternal? That doesn't make any sense. And then you just pull out 1 Peter 1.14, be like, okay, you said you're not separating them, but here in the scriptures it says it's separating them. It's just that they have the same name, guys. We come in the name of Jesus. God is a spirit. Our father, his name is Jesus, as we just saw in Revelation 21, 9 and Galatians 4.26. And all of us who are found in him, we come in his name and... We, we're preaching in his name. There's only one name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Okay. I don't want to get carried away on that. That's a Christological issue. Right. <clears throat> but with respect to this problem that we're dealing with. <laughs> you talk about we're going to deal with this problem because he, he already opened up another can of worms. He's like, uh, that's a Christological issue. Uh. Many scholars come to verse 32 and they say, Obviously, Jesus here is qualifying his prediction by saying, after all, nobody really knows the day and the hour, including me. So, in a sense, Jesus has a get-out-of-jail-free card here for being wrong about stating that it would all take place within the time frame of this generation. And so, since he has this disclaimer, that nullifies or uh, reduces the import of his previous statement that it would come in this generation. Well, I think this is another one of those examples of where a text is problematic. Sometimes scholars use tortuous devices to try to solve the problem. There's no reason. Well, the Bible what does the scripture tell us? He said the scholars. What was that? Wait a minute. He says we're not ignorant. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Sometimes we call them, we call them scholars, right? We call them scholars. To see, to try. Sometimes scholars use tortuous devices to try to solve the problem. There's no reason to see that verse 32 would nullify Jesus' broader statement earlier when he says simply, this generation will not pass away until all of these things take place. And then he qualifies it by saying what? I don't know what day in this generation. I don't know what hour it will be, but I do know this. It's going to be within the time frame of this generation. That sometime within this generation, before this generation passes away, all these things will come to pass. But don't ask me for the day and the hour. That would seem to be a much more sober understanding of what Jesus. It was so funny, guys. It's going to explain to you why this world, these people invented different generations. You know, how they say, oh, you're. This is World War II. That was the such and such generation. Then there was the boomers. Then there was Gen X. Then there's just, uh, no, so, yeah, Gen X. Then Gen Y. 
then uh, Gen Z, right? <laughs> this is why they're doing all these generations. Like, what generation you is, baby? This is why they invented the different the different generations. Because let me let's let's cut to the chase on let's cut to the chase on a lot of this, guys. There's only two generations. There's only two generations. There's a chosen generation. There's a chosen generation. And there is a There's a wicked generation, okay? There's a wicked and adulterous generation. There's only two generations in the scriptures. Guess what generation you start out in, Nicodemus? Guess. Why do you need to be born again? Because you're of the wicked generation. Right? Once you're born again, you're found in him. According, he had chosen us in him. When? Before the foundation of the world. So the chosen, gener the chosen generation is a generation that lasts how long, guys? Forever. The chosen generation lasts forever. So when they're giving you this, oh, the, the quote unquote, whatever generation, and then the, the boomers, and then the Xers, and then the Ys, and then the then the uh, you know the generation z they're just trying to uh, uh, the things that this world does is to deceive you that's the device what is the device why are you counting us as generations um so that when you look at the scriptures your mind will reference these false generations when god is saying there's only two generations there's a wicked and adulterous generation why are they adulterous well, they claim that they're faithful to the law. And it says, by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So you're not a just husband if you're married. You're not just if your spouse is, if you're married to the law. You're, you're a cheater. You ever see that, 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 that show Cheaters? It said, if you offend one, you offend it all. Oh my goodness. You know what that means? That means you weren't doing a little heavy petting. That means you was doing everything. Everything. You said, I want to run the bases. So you ran all the bases and slid in the home. Home being the grave. So the scriptures are letting you know you start out, <laughs> Nicodemus, you start out in the wicked generation, right? You're wicked. And God's angry at the wicked every day. Why is he angry? He's like, he's like, don't resist. You know, today if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Why do you resist? He's, he's like, look, I'm patient, not willing that any should perish, but all of you guys in the wicked generation are going to perish. And he's saying, when he's talking about, you know, See the, see those stones in those temples? He's saying, don't miss the time. When, when God comes to you in the likeness, fashioned as a man, when, say, I come to you, Marcus, well, it's no more I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. What do you mean it's no more you that live, but Christ that liveth in you? Well, I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit, because the spirit of God dwelleth in me. But if any man have not the spirit of God, which is the spirit of Christ, then they're none of his. They're, they're children of the flesh. They haven't been born again. They're still in the wicked generation. They're in the flesh, wicked generation, can't please God. So you have to see yourself as a sinner if you're in the wicked generation. And you can't sit there and say, I thank God I'm not like other men. And you have to say, there's nothing good to dwell within me. So why would I go back into my house, my temple, my tabernacle, my body? Because I know that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. That's why when you're in the field, which is the world, Right? Your father sowed into the flesh of your mom and he reaped a child of what? Death. You sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. You sow into the spirit, preach the word in season, out of season, you shall of the spirit reap what? Life everlasting. It's a different field. One field is in heaven. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. Be fruitful and multiply. One field has corrupt seed and all the fruit withers and falls away. The, the, the fruit of the tree, of the corrupt tree, is rotten fruit. You know how they have the thing with the apple and the worm? You're like, this fruit is infested. There's pestilence in the land. And the worm dieth not. And the fruit just keeps perishing and falling to the ground and rotting into the grave. Right? So guys, it's, it's, 
It's when you believe the gospel. I'm cutting to the chase on this because I don't want to make this too long. When you start out, you're in a wicked and adulterous generation and you must be born again. But when you're born again, you're born again a new creature. And that's why it says when he says this generation shall not pass away until all these things be fulfilled. The reason why he's saying that is because he says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But now, since you believe, you believed when you were what? Of the wicked generation. That's when you had to believe, Nicodemus, when you were in the wicked house in the, of the wicked generation. You had to believe and you had to deny yourself. Then when you believe, you can say what? I've been what? Crucified. All things have passed away with Christ. I'm not in the flesh, but in the what? Spirit. Lively stones built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. You don't go try to go back to the flesh. It says, are you so foolish? Have begun in the spirit. Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Later in the flesh can't please God. God's called the father of spirits. So that's when you say he'll, he'll come with his angels. That's because once you're born from heaven, then it says, well, oh, I saw Jerusalem coming down from heaven because we're now here as people of the light. And now we're pilgrims and strangers upon the earth because this is not our home. And we're here to do what? Destroy the enemy, which is what? Death. But it's not carnal warfare. We have the whole arm of God, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, girded about with truth, feet shot of the gospel of peace, a shield, which is faith and the sword, which is the what? Word of God, right? Preach the word in season and out of season. Cry aloud and spare not. We're not trying to spare anyone because we what? We want to destroy the works of darkness, the unfruitful works of darkness. We're here to destroy. And so therefore, all those people who used to be of our old home, the members which are upon the earth, we're here to do what? Mortify, to destroy them. How so? Not with the quote unquote physical sword. Our weapons are not carnal. We're destroying them by preaching the gospel so that they can be destroyed the same way we were destroyed. Simply by believing the truth. Old things are passed away, destroyed. Behold, all things are become new. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So we're the chosen generation because we've been what? Regenerated. And this is why the scriptures say he chosen us to be in him <laughs> being found. Where are the sheep found? Where are the sheep found? in him before the foundation of the world because he's the only one that's righteous right the spirit is life because right that we it was him we should be holy oh i saw a holy city oh who's the father of the bride of christ's children <laughs> i'll show you the, the 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 bride of the lamb's wife who's that jerusalem above is free the mother of us all oh okay it says and without blame how could you blame us if we're found in our god we have the righteousness of God because we're found in him. That's why he's saying, don't look for anything in your old. There's nothing in your old house. That's why you had to do what? Deny it and destroy it. And so he says, see these stones, see these temples. He says, there will not be one left stone, left one stone upon another. And it talks about. He says, listen, and will not leave within me, within the one stone upon another, because I knew it's not the time of thy visitation. Basically saying. All you have to do, guys, the way that you look at this is look at it like this. There's Adam who, who sinned and he says, you know, he says, from dust was I form and back to dust will I go. Right. And so think about Adam and Eve as being a house. And then Eve came out of what? The house of Adam. Right. Formed from the dust. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Right. Adam sowed into Eve his seed. But he talked about now, hey, you guys are corrupt now. You're corrupt. You corrupted yourself. So now every child that you have is cursed. That's why they die and they go back to death. He says, you know, you're going to mourn. You're going to mourn because you, all your children are going to die. You think you're bringing forth fruit, but all your children are perishable fruit. They're all going to die. They're going to go back to the dust. They're going to be devoured by the serpent, right? On that belly will I go and Thou shalt eat dust all the days of thy life. He's saying all your children are as dust and the serpent's going to devour, meaning the, the devil, the grave, right? The enemy, which is the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking who may devour. And he's saying, since all your children are children of death, that happened where? <laughs> that happened where, guys? 
That happened in Genesis. And since that happened in Genesis, it's not like, well, maybe later on down the line, there's going to be somebody who's righteous in the, in the tabernacle or the flesh or the house of the first Adam formed from the dust. No, he's like, no, corruption just brings forth more corruption. You sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. So then he says, but then the last Adam is a quickening spirit. He says, no, God is a spirit. So God, who's a spirit who comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, he's saying, look, that last Adam, you got to be in that last Adam. But how can you go from the first Adam to the quote unquote last Adam? He's saying you can't. It's an impasse. It's an impasse, meaning you can't bring anything from that old house into the quote unquote new house. You can't mix the garments. You can't mix a temporal garment that perishes with a what? Eternal garment that does not perish. You can't mix the mortal with the immortal, light with darkness, corruption with incorruption. You cannot mix it. You can't mix it. So it's saying that when you believe you're a new creature, old things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So now you're in the quote unquote last Adam. And he's saying that when you believe the gospel, everything, all the stuff that you, this world is kind of, is like an illusion. It, this world is kind of like an illusion. It's temporal. And I won't even get into all this other stuff, but uh, let's just put it this way. All the so-called science, sci-fi movies you see and all this kind of stuff, guys, those movies, some of that stuff that says it's like everything that is, is the way that it is. There's actually nothing new under the sun. You may have the illusion that there's something new, but there's nothing new under the sun. Right? He's like, there's nothing new. And this is why people say, well, where's the promise of his coming? When is Jesus coming back? Because they don't realize that Christ comes fashioned in the likeness of all of us who are no longer children of the flesh. It's like we're the quote unquote aliens. You know, when on TV, I told you how they're mocking you with the quote unquote generation, the boomers, the Xers, the Y, the Z, right? They're mocking you because they're trying to put in your mind this idea of these different generations and this illusion of quote unquote progress. They know they have to do that. They need, they need to keep things moving, right? And the other thing that they need to do to keep you, uh, to keep you tricked and keep you fooled is they need to fake Bible prophecy. They need to say, well, we used to be very blatant about lying and saying that God is a white man. And you go to Europe right now, there's evidence that they believe that. You go look at the Sistine Chapel and go to the Vatican and go to your local churches, synagogues, hall, whatever, temples, systems, whatever. You see the fake three Abrahamic faiths. That all they do is like in the past, you look at what they've done and what they still do is they're colluding to war profiteer and making merchandise out of their members, right? That's all they do. They're just making merchandise out of all the so-called people. That's what they do. And so it's what the scriptures are saying is that all these guys do is they sit there and they're, they're organized in, 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 in orchestrating divisions, but it's kind of like a coordinated division. Because they, they want to make enemies so they can do what? Or they say, what's the word? I don't know, balkanize or consolidate lands and territories. And so they're working together. They're actually colluding. But you think at the bottom, when they're, they're, they're like, oh, that's our enemy. But at, at the top, they're like, okay, how, how many are we going to sacrifice? We're going to start a war. Okay, how many are we going to do? What's going to happen? Like the war, what's going to happen? A lot of times it's, it's already drawn up, right? Already drawn up, orchestrated. So I just want you to know that the war, that the real war, the real enemy is what? Death. That's the real enemy. Death. But guess who's the one who, who, can, who can defeat death? Obviously, God says, look, it's my good will and pleasure to give eternal life to all those who believe. That's why it says without faith, you can, it's impossible to please him because he's like, look, I told you to believe. All you got is it's, 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 it's simple. Just believe. Right. He tells you that the man, Jesus, God, who's eternal, comes in the likeness of mortals fashioned as a man. So he came fashioned as the man, Jesus Christ. And with that mortal body of his, that mortal body, God's not mortal, but his mortal body that he put on, came fashioned in, 
That's the one that died, the man, Jesus Christ. Right. Paid the legal sin debt with his blood of that body. Right. And then he says, look, that was a sacrifice that you guys made because you're the ones who killed your brother, Jesus, according to the flesh. All right. You're the one who killed him. You sacrificed him. And God, knowing that the children of the flesh in them dwell in no good thing, that they're liars and murderers and do the works of their father, the devil. He says, I knew that you would do this thing. I knew you would murder the man, Jesus. But what you need to understand is the words, the, the words that I speak to there is spirit in their life. The truth isn't the flesh. It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. But you've been you you did these things thinking that you were doing one thing, but God knew your wickedness and he used your wickedness. And he's saying, now you gotta understand that that the man Jesus, whom you crucified and, and exalted on the cross, he says, He is the one that lords over you. It's crown of thorns. Just like in the desert. He says, Now you're in the desert. <laughs> There's a serpent upon a rod. You need bread and water and there's serpents everywhere and you're getting bitten. You're getting bitten because you're vipers. You're a generation of vipers. You're serpents. You're a wicked and adulterous generation. And he says he's the bread of life. He's the living water. And he's telling you, look, I, I'm going to come in the likeness of. Of a bond servant, I'm going to come in the likeness of Egyptian of an Egyptian. Remember, because Egyptian rep, Egypt represents bondage, right? Egypt's a pyramid scheme, right? People trying to climb to the top of the quote unquote man-made mountains, right? To lord over one another, right? And he's saying, I'm going to come in the likeness fashioned as a man, but don't look at the outward appearance. It's actually, it's actually Christ in my saints, they're all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. So he's telling you who the true people of God are. And he says, there's going to be many people who are going to come and claim that they're doing things in his name. And they're going to be war profiteering and spilling blood and using his word wickedly and deceitfully. And he says, they're going to fool many people because of their greed. Right. They're going to lie to you because they're not going to want to tell you. Why would they tell you the truth about the scriptures? If they're using the scriptures to make merchandise out of you, that would be like them saying, hey, we've been lying, not just this year, but we've been lying since what? Since the beginning of time. <laughs> we've been lying since the very beginning. You think they're going to tell you that? To tell you that would mean they're done lying. They can't help themselves. They're liars. Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil, and the work of your father will you will do. He was a liar from the beginning and abode not in the truth. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. And listen to this part. And the father of it, father of lies. Right? And all men are liars. And so... When it's talking about heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. It's talking about people simply believing the gospel. It's simply talking about people simply believing the gospel, guys. Because we endure, but a lot of people want to endure sound doctrine, right? Right? It tells you to beware of the leaven. It says beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Can you endure sound doctrine? If I'm sitting here and I'm telling you these things, I'm telling you about God, who's a spirit. I'm telling you about the gospel, how you're not going to be justified by the law, how the legal sin that was paid by the man, Jesus Christ, who's not God. I'm telling you how God, who's a spirit, quickened that mortal body, raised that mortal body from the dead. The same one that died because, you know, it had the wounds, the proof of death. Same mortal body that ate dead fish. Why? Why would God raise a dead body? Because God comes fashioned in the likeness of the dead likeness of the children of darkness but god is light and in him is no darkness at all light had no fellowship with darkness i'm not in the flesh but in the spirit so us who are ministering spirits and it's god that worketh in us the spirit and it says for all flesh right 
All flesh. All flesh. He says, well, I did not leave. See these temples? Not one stone. All flesh is as grass and the glory of man is the flower grass. The grass withered and the flower thereof. Oh, there it is. Falleth away. There will not be left one stone upon another. Go not back into. Don't go back into your house. Don't go back to your garment. Saving some of fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. They in the flesh. Don't go back into your house, your tabernacle, your tent. Then he says, but my word, the word of the Lord endureth forever. Oh, we're born again by the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. So when we believed, he says, well, now you've tasted death because you've been crucified with Christ. But now you're a new creature. All things have passed away. You're not in the flesh, but in the what? Spirit. Behold, all things have become new. And this is the word by which the gospel is preached. Can you endure? Can you endure this truth? Remember, the weapons aren't carnal. <laughs> we wrestle not with flesh and blood, right? Can you endure this doctrine, guys? For the time will come, right? right? The kingdom is come. The kingdom is come. The kingdom of God is at hand. For the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. Who are those who won't endure sound doctrine? The generation who will miss the time of their visitation. It's the generation that all flesh is as grass. It's the generation that won't believe, guys, who stay in their tabernacle, their tent, their house. It's the generation that, that won't believe. Right. There should not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. All flesh is as grass to go man to fall grass. Right. And shall lay thee even with the ground dust and thy children within thee. See, think about the two temples. First Adam, last Adam, last Adam's a quickening spirit. You're first born the natural man, flesh and blood. If you're born again. You're born of what? The spirit, eternal spirit. The spirit is life because of righteousness. And they shall not. Listen, he says, your kingdom is divided against itself. And because you don't believe, I heap onto you. You're going to get, I'm going to give you over to those teachers whom your heart loves so much. Since you harden your heart to the truth, then he says, okay, I'm going to give you over. Because you got itching ears, I'm going to give you over. So you go ahead and believe the lie. And he says, and because you're going to believe the lie, you're not, you're not going to pass from death to life. You're not going to be born a new, a new creature. You're going to remain in your kingdom of darkness, right? And you're going to miss the time of your visitation. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. When were you here, Lord? Well, I came in my saints. When you saw Marcus, you should have just listened for the voice. When he came to you and told you the gospel and preached the word to you, you should have listened. And so you couldn't endure the words that I speak to. You're like, I won't hear this. Right? You gnashed your teeth. You said, I won't hear this. Right? You stoned Stephen. I won't hear this. Right? Anyone who tells you the truth, you, you, you can't, you don't hear it. So you then you pretend you disguised yourself as an angel of light and pretend. That you're my sheep. You're not my sheep. I know my sheep. I don't know. I don't know who you are. You have no part in me. Depart from me. I never knew you. You're not in the spirit. You're in the flesh. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. Right? So it's talking about this. It's talking about will they endure? Will they endure? It says because some people... They're not going to believe it when the gospel's preached to them. And in 1 Peter 4, 6, it says, look, they don't understand it's at hand. They don't understand the end of all things are at hand. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Right? In the first Adam, dead. I saw the dead raised. You're of the resurrection of the dead. All the children of the flesh are in the resurrection of the dead. Us who believe we're in the resurrection of eternal life is just that our old body has been quickened. The dead body has been quickened, but that's no more us. Romans 7. He says, the gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged of sin because they believe not on me. Why don't you believe? 
The legal sin that's been paid. All you got to do is believe that God, who's a spirit, is merciful and gracious, will give you the free gift of eternal life. And you don't have to try to work the law because the, the man, Jesus, who was made a curse, made to be sin, he paid the legal sin debt with his blood. So now you just need to believe God, who's a spirit, who's the same God who raised the mortal body of the man, Jesus, and is the same God who says, I'll give you the free gift of eternal life. And you just believe the promise and you don't make God like the what? Corruptible man. Right. So the gospel preached to them that are dead. They may be judged according to men in the flesh. Remember, he took me in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Right. But live according to God in the spirit. But then here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Right. Let's go back. First, Peter. We did it. We did the generation, guys. He talked about this. He talked about things pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, right? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. You're no longer of this world. Behold, all things have become new. Jerusalem above is free as your mother of us all. You've been born again into the kingdom, the eternal kingdom, right? Right? But my word shall not pass away. And then it's saying, well, wait a minute. But the end of all things, listen, heaven and earth shall pass away. Listen, but the end of all things is what? is at hand right listen guys what I say in the one I say in all watch watch see the world's got a lot of distractions for you and all I'm telling you to do is you need to believe the gospel guys this is beautiful I mean it's so beautiful See, and it's way different than what you've been taught. This is way, don't tell me. I know you've been taught this lie. You've been taught to go into buildings made with hands and try to worship God in your flesh and try to please God in your flesh and try to do works in your church to prove that you're such, such a quote unquote godly person. All lies, all lies. There's a thief who was on the cross and you know the thief on the cross, ironically, didn't try to rob God because he says, I'm not going to try to steal your glory because I know you won't give your glory to another. So I'm going to deny myself. And he, that thief on the cross believed. And he said, I, I'm not trying to get anything out of this old garment. Let this garment hang. Right. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. But a lot of these people claim to give you guys gifts and they're giving you false gifts. They're giving you false gifts. They say, oh, I'm preaching the gospel. They're giving you false gifts. They've given you a false God. They give you a false gift. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand. This world is temporal. When, you, when you're born again into eternal life, that is the end of the old you. That's not even you. Paul said, he, look, Paul said, he said, let's go Romans 7, I say 16-ish. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. What are you talking about? For that, I know that in me that is in my flesh. Don't forget, he said, it is no more I. That is not me. I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That old me is not me. I know some of you guys are like, well, that sounds like it's so confusing. No, it's not, Nicodemus. Stop it. You're just being, you're just, Jesus said, marvel not. So stop this. It's so confusing stuff. You're just trying to glory in your flesh. That, that's just stop it. It's so hard. No, it's not. You know what's hard? You have to strive to, you know, here's why it's hard. Here's why. Let me, let me show you why it's hard. It's so hard. Here's why it's hard. It's called pride. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, Pharaoh. It's so hard. 
right? It's so hard to acknowledge the truth. I just, it's so hard. I love lies. I love the lies. What did my father, I remember my, I remember my daddy told me, I remember my papa told me I was of the chosen race, right? And so, you think, here's what it is. You're thinking, well, I'm not part of the, I'm not part of the wicked and adulterous generation, because I see the signs and wonders in the Middle East. Oh, I can see the signs in the Middle East. I can see a sign in the Middle East, guys. Oh, look at that's proof of the prophecy. Basically, what you guys are saying, you're saying, well, you know, the the Middle East, Jerusalem, is basically proven. Because since, since this is built in the Middle East and, this, and since he said my sheep could not enter in unless, unless they were born again and he said the children of the flesh are not the children of God and all this stuff, it's just a testimony. That whole city, that whole your whole country, your whole nation, your whole lobby system, your whole APAC system, your old Kufi, Christian so-called United for Israel, all that is a testimony of you just saying, God is a liar. All that stuff literally is just you saying, God is a liar. When he said, my kingdom is not of this world, the kingdom come not of salvation, children of the flesh are not children of God. You can't enter in, Nicodemus can't even see it, all this kind of stuff. My kingdom is not of this world. You're just basically saying, mm. you're, 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 you're not saying it with your mouth, but in your heart, you're saying God is a liar. That's all you're saying. God's a respected person. You're saying God's a white man. You're saying God dies. I mean, and then you contradict yourself. You're like, well, God dies, but then he, that he's co-eternal, co-equal. Well, he knows everything, but in this case, he didn't know everything. And uh, this is kind of problematic for the Christology, but you know, it's like you just contradiction, 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 contradiction. And then someone comes and tells you it's spiritually discerning. You're like, mm, that's really hard. <laughs> Because you, you you think this world, which parents, you're literally in a world watching, putting your parents and your forefathers in the dirt like dung. And you're sitting here arguing about, you know, I just think the flesh is eternal. <laughs> it's like, what the hell are you talking about? You think the flesh is eternal. It's insane. So they say, well, you know what? You know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna end this guy. But what they did for you when they gave you the lying sign and wonder in 1948 in the Middle East, and they're giving you more lying signs and wonders now. They're gonna give you more lying signs and wonders to fake the pestilence. Then they're gonna give you more lying signs and wonders by burning up a lot of trees and stuff. Because you know you gotta read Revelation. You gotta think how do the colonizers think if they gotta fake this prophecy? Well, you listen to their lying prophets. Who are sent out to give you a precursor to foreshadow and tell you how you need to interpret it when they do it, right? When they execute the plan, right? So they say, well, it says something about famine. So what are they going to do? They're going to they're going to cause famine. But what's the true famine, guys? Who has the bread of life? What's the true famine? God is saying, I got. What are you talking about? I got enough bread. I'm not running out of living water. Let whosoever come and take. They're like, I'm not going to be a beggar. He said, God's like, all you got to do is believe. I'm like, I'm not going to humble myself. That makes me a beggar. I'm eating sumptuously every day. So to fake the prophecy, when God is explaining that the famine is talking about the word of God, because there's so many liars in the world. Right? And God's like, I have this, I'm my graces. I, I, have, I have so much bread. I got so much bread. I got so much grace. I got so much grace. I got so much grace, but you got so much, so much pride, right? So there's a famine and people are dying of what guys? What are they dying of? Why do men perish? Myocard myocarditis, periocarditis. Men die because of what? Heart failure, unbelief. They're faking prophecy even to this day. The pestilence, man's hearts filling them for fear of things coming up on the earth. Right? They're faking prophecy. They've been faking prophecy since 
before Christopher Columbus set sail, y'all. And the Bible says, I know them to say they're Jews or not. And they said, you know, this whole being regenerated, making you the chosen generation, talking about something you're born again, of incorruptible seed, right? A peculiar people that show forth the praise of him that call you out of darkness. So you know it's not talking about this world because it says, this world, it says, if our gospel be hid, it's hidden from those from the God of this world that blinded the mind of them that believe. And I said, this world is a world full of darkness. Apparently, if you're in heaven, there's no darkness in God's kingdom, right? It's a kingdom of light. It says, this is the kingdom of darkness, right? But many people just want to call God a liar. And they said, you know what? Since you guys don't want to believe the truth, you know, I'm going to help y'all with your interpre interpretation. What did, what did Sproul say? He said, there's many torturous devices that the scholars, <laughs> he said, the, the scholars got many torturous devices. So instead of being chosen generation, all ministering spirits, they said, well, how can we keep it about, keep it about the flesh? They said, we're going to say that the, the, the spiritual man is the natural man, right? Even though it says the natural man receiving not the things of the spirit of God, right? Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. Let's, but he says, instead of it being chosen generation, they said, let's put in the word chosen race. See? Because there I say the interpretation has to be, must absolutely be, the lie that God has a chosen race according to his chosen people in the flesh. Well, they're chosen for destruction. That's That's been proved positive. You know, that's the testimony. The earth is bearing witness against them. Mama telling on them. And mama said, I'll cover, I'll cover it up. Bury the bodies. I know. Bear, don't let the, just don't let the, bury the bodies. Bur, bury them. I know. And they all, they're all lies. Let's, let's hide the proof that they're not the people of God. Just hide it. <laughs> mama said, swallow them up. Swallow them up. Devour her own children. That's a shame. It says, they say, well, let's put chosen race in here. Chosen race. Chosen race. Right? Chosen race. Chosen race. God, right, look at this. Elect race. YLT. Chosen race. And, of course, our good friend Darby. Good friend Darby. Chosen race. See? But, hey, guys. No one's trying to fool you. Nobody's trying to trick you. It's all good. And it's all good down here in, in, planet, in planet Serpent. <laughs> it's all good down here in, in this world of darkness. And so, so we who are the children of the kingdom of light, we're coming here to tell you. And we're warning you. We're warning you. And some of y'all love the riches of Egypt so much that you won't even believe the gospel. We're not down here asking you for your money. We're just telling you to do something so simple. You have to believe who God says he is. And God is a spirit named Jesus. Right? Don't confuse the flesh, the man Jesus that died with God who is a spirit named Jesus. Don't think that there's children of the flesh who are the children of God because they're not. Don't think that you're going to be justified by keeping the law. The legal sin that has already been paid by the blood of the man Jesus Christ. Right? Whom God came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He, in that body, that mortal body, possessive, God's mortal body, if that makes sense, because God's not mortal, God's immortal. But he came in a mortal body, which he, quote unquote, possesses, right? So I know people sometimes struggle with like, what does his mean, his possessive versus, oh, that's him, right? Well, that's why Paul's like, it's no more I. It's me, but it's not me. What do you mean, Paul? <laughs> so, guys, I hope you understand. I really do. And all you need to do, you guys, you're saved by grace through faith. It's a, it's a free gift. It's so beautiful. All this stuff, as horrible as it can get and probably will get in some cases, I don't know. Um, guys, think about it. Think about the free gift. Think about the Think about how wonderful God is. And when the scriptures say cry loud and spare not, it's basically saying, right, what I'm doing right now, I'm using the sword right now. Oh, guys, I'm using the sword right now. I'm using the sword right now. And some of y'all are going to open y'all mouth right in your heart. You're going to speak back. You're going to pull out your sword and say, you're going to say, I got a sharp tongue. I know how to answer back to God. I got a sharp tongue. I can answer back to God. That's what you're saying. 
Many of you are saying it in your heart. How can I answer back? How can I defeat the, his boy going against the Trinity? That boy, don't he don't believe God's a white man? <laughs> it's so crazy. What's so funny about it is God can come in the likeness of any sinful flesh. Any color, any shade, size, color, whatever. But people are so, it's like, why do you cling so much to the perishable things? It's because of the images and the illusions that have been given to you. But see, God says something. He says, you're without excuse. You're without excuse. We know that the chosen generation is the all those who've been regenerated. And when you're regenerated, born again, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So this little, uh, what'd you say? Higher critical scholarly torturement of instrument of torture. <laughs> High textual critics. We know this is bogus. This is the most obvious tale. To, see, I'm going to let it go, guys. But again, I've told you, and, I, and I'm telling you, you know what they're going to do. The serpent, the devil has not changed. He's still going to keep devouring. He's still going to keep having war. And remember, when he opens his mouth, that's a war. Because the main thing that he wants to do is he wants to keep you from believing the truth. If he can get you to be in this kingdom and enjoy these things in this world so much that you don't do that one simple little thing, which is the most important thing you can do, the only thing that actually matters is that you believe the truth, believe who God is and believe the promise of eternal life, believe the gospel. If the if the if these devils can get you to do that, meaning if you can, if you, when I say these devils, I'm talking. If you're not saved, I'm talking to you. <laughs> if if you can, if, if you keep yourself so distracted with the things of the world that you don't believe the truth, and you forego the 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 the, the love of God and the riches of God for what? All you had to do is believe. That's all you had to do. And when you're born again, you can't you can't be unborn again. And your flesh, man, that's no longer even you. So your flesh, man, going to go do what your flesh, man, going to do. You're dead to that old man. And see, the government don't like that either. Because he know, you know, your flesh, man, ain't got nothing to do with you being a child of God. He like, well, you, you your old flesh, man, might pop off at him. He like, well, wait, wait a minute now. They can't be knowing this truth. <laughs> He's a, that's, that's dangerous. This boy, now he, he know that his flesh man ain't got nothing to do. He may pop off. All right, guys, I'm going to let it go.